When inclement weather touches down at O'Hare International's North Airfield, gravity guides rainwater to an on-site retention pond. Walsh Construction is acting as the general contractor for the creation of a 60-foot diameter sunken caisson pump station, a concrete spillway, and an intake structure that serves to transfer the excess water from this retention pond to the nearby Willow Higgins Creek. The O'Hare North Detention Pump Station and Spillway is part of the $6.6 billion O'Hare Modernization Plan and one of the several ongoing Walsh projects at O'Hare International Airport. Walsh is furnishing all labor, materials, tools, equipment, transportation and service for the pump station, spillway and intake structure, all of which are slated for completion in October 2008. The pump station is a 60-foot outside diameter by 65-foot deep uh, cylindrical pump station that is built by uh, the sunken caisson method. Uh, the spillway is a uh, slab with walls poured on grade approximately 65 feet wide and 120 feet long and the intake uh, is a small concrete structure in the side of the detention basin that we jack 42 inch RCP pipe uh, to the bottom of the pump station. A first for Walsh, we will use the sunken caisson method to set the basin structure at a grade of 65 feet below ground level. This job is a little different than, uh, than most Walsh jobs. It's a smaller crew. Uh, we, we don't have a lot of on-site employees. Um, it's, it's different in that we have a technical job um, as, as far as sinking the caisson, something we haven't done before. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bigger engineering challenge um, than most jobs that, that we typically uh, run across. After being awarded the job in November of 06, we started preparing for groundbreaking in February of this year and commenced drilling for rock grouting shortly thereafter. At the outset of the project, the site is leveled to provide access for the drilling equipment. Once the drilling equipment has been mobilized, primary holes are drilled and grouted, with a packer providing pressure in both the bedrock itself and in the fractured rock that resides above it. Once these primary holes have been grouted, secondary holes are drilled and grouted, with packers again being used to grout two separate lifts. Sheet piling is then driven into a circular ring around the future pump station, allowing for five feet of clearance between this piling and the future concrete wall. Due to the force required to drive these piles into the ground, PZ35 sheeting was used. Once in place, the first 19 feet of earth is excavated from within the sheet piling. A concrete alignment ring, or donut, is formed and poured around the perimeter of the excavation. Four inches of clearance are allowed between this alignment ring and the future concrete walls. The first 13-foot lift of the pump station is formed and poured. A sloped edge and cutting shoe are included in this first lift. The second 13-foot lift is formed and poured immediately following the setting of the first. The formwork is then removed and an excavator is lowered into the shaft interior. Excavation commences using a skip box hoisted by a crane to remove the soil. Beginning each excavation shift, soil is dished out from the center of the shaft to a depth of approximately three to four feet. Next, four foot by four foot notches are dug into the material under the cutting edge, thus leaving four foot soil columns around the perimeter to hold up the shaft. Ultimately, the excavation is completed in lifts of roughly three to four feet per shift, broken up into two stages. Throughout, the notches are excavated in a predetermined pattern in order to allow the shaft to sink in a vertically level manner. Once the columns are excavated, the soil begins to collapse and the caisson sinks. The settlement is monitored continually throughout this process in order to ensure the walls sink vertically. Variation on this excavation sequence is employed if one side of the caisson begins to sink slower than the other. The walls are then sunk to a prescribed grade just above the fracture rock level. Next, rock bolts are drilled and anchored into the fracture rock below in order to prevent uplift of the concrete floor. 
Once these rock bolts are in place, the concrete floor is poured. The intake pipe is then jacked into the pump station from the retention pond floor. The balance of the pump station equipment and concrete lid are then placed, completing the station's construction. The concrete work should be completed sometime late December or early January. Uh, at that point, it's going to be a mechanical and electrical show. We'll have uh, the pumps installed, uh, there's a small gantry crane inside, uh, and, the, and the piping. There is some HVAC, but, but very minimal. Throughout the project thus far, keeping the sinking case on level has been the biggest challenge. If we do happen to get off level, uh, we monitor at all times. We have full-time survey uh, monitoring, the, uh, monitoring the case on as we sink it. If we start to tilt to one side, we go and relieve dirt from the other side. Worst case scenario, we can throw material back in the hole and stabilize the, the case on from sinking anymore. Typically, we do stabilize the case on before pouring. We put material back in the hole to, uh, to create a bearing underneath the uh, cutting shoe. The construction of the spillway has recently begun and will soon be joined by concurrent work on the intake structure. Like our other current projects for the O'Hare Modernization Plan, the North Detention Pump Station and Spillway construction has faced a unique set of challenges. The security is, uh, is an issue we have to go through. Yeah, we all have to be badged, fingerprinted. Uh, you got to go through a driver's test to, to drive out here in the airport roads. Uh, the other issues about the airport is, is uh, uh, other than security, is uh, a lot of noise. Uh, the plane, the level of the, the noise from the planes taking off, the jets coming in and out. We have an abandoned taxiway bordering us on the north side, a live runway uh, on our uh, east side, and then we're on the edge of a pit on the south and west sides. Uh, as a rule, we're in clay, so water, grain poses a challenge. We get flooded out. As much as you'd like to think that the soils are lensed out here, we, we have found in the sheet piling and in the excavation that the soil conditions from one side of the hole, which is only 50 feet across, 60 feet, are different. And that, that affects our digging a lot. We've got to really be careful to uh, sort of over -ex the the hard clay sides and the other side will we'll just follow. Yeah, the safety on this project is, is very good because uh, uh, we have zero accidents, zero incidents, uh, and it's the only one on the airport right now to, to date that has, has no accidents on it. So yeah, we're very proud of that. Currently, the job is roughly 35% complete, and we expect to continue to stay ahead of schedule. To date, uh, our work with the OMP has been very positive. Uh, I have a, a good RE, and so far there have been very, very few issues on this job. We do uh, weekly progress meetings and then monthly CPM schedule meetings. Uh, the job is running smoothly enough that our, our progress meetings are usually about 20 minutes. We coordinate very well. Um, we uh, have tried to jump when they need us to jump, and uh, in return, they've been very helpful to us when we want some changes or need something. They've been uh, a good client to work along with, not just for. I think this project uh, means a lot for Walsh. Uh, the sunken case on method, this is the first one we've done, but there are others that have been done in Illinois and specifically in Michigan and some of the surrounding states. So it gives us a new market uh, or a new method to approach a project. The method, when it works well, you don't have large open cuts. Um, it can be a much more confined area, and it's it's a very neat neat method when it works uh, when it works well.